As you know, brethren, some time ago I have delivered you a message about the place of safety in which I tried to clear up various misunderstandings that we have accumulated over the last three decades since the great apostasy which happened in the Church of God in 1995, which was of course planned you know, for a long time to happen. In any case, however, I've decided to return to that topic and to deliver you a few more messages, shorter or longer ones, about the place of safety. Something happened last month in one of the one of those churches of God, which really prompted me to this decision, lest we all again, by any chance, would be would fall into any kind of confusion regarding the place of safety. So at the end of you know when I feel that I've exhausted that kind of subject and I've delivered a few more messages, I might really tell you what was the immediate reason or the immediate cause for this and the other messages. But I want to bring your attention to certain things in the Bible because nowadays I'm very appalled by some preachers who are much older than me, much older than I, some preacher who, preachers who were even there when Herbert W. Armstrong was alive. And as you know, he was an avid believer in the in the place of safety. I'm very appalled that there are some preachers who are just giving messages which contradict or somehow water down that teaching one of those teaching was that you know there will be there is no mention of the specific place of safety or that petra per se is not nowhere mentioned in the bible but there is only a slight allusion to that you know in the book of isaiah without going into any details well uh let's just see something that is there in the Bible, which we as God's people should know. Are you aware, brethren, that Psalm 91 is actually the place of safety psalm? Psalm 91. Interestingly enough, as you know, when we, if those, the Philadelphia remnant, which will be accounted worthy to escape to the place of safety, you know that in the place of safety, the Philadelphia remnant is to remain for three and a half years. Interestingly enough, after Psalm 91, there comes Psalm 92, which is actually the Sabbath Psalm. But we know also from God's plan of salvation that there are 6,000 years given to men for his misrule and uh, for him to go his way and to prove him to himself that without God it is really impossible to solve any of our human problems. And then we have the, the end of that misrule of man will be three and a half years prior to Christ's return, in which period the Philadelphia remnant is to be in the place of safety. Following that should come 1,000 years of restoration. We might say a good 1,000 uh, year long Sabbath day to restore all the earth and to prepare it for the great second resurrection that is going to happen later. Before we go into Psalm 50, 91 that is, I want to bring to your attention that Psalm 57 verse 1 actually is correlate with the first verse in Psalm 91. In Psalm 57, uh, 57, that is, verse 1, is prayer for safety from enemies. David's prayer for safety from enemies. As you remember, David was persecuted by Saul. And verse 1 says, well, the precursor says, To the chief musician said to do not destroy. Do not destroy a mish, uh, mishfam of David when he fled from Saul into the cave. Now, as you know, brethren, Petra is also a city of caves. There are plenty of caves you have seen. There is a, I think there is a video which is fixed right at the entrance of Petra. So there's a live streaming going on all the time about what's going on in Petra. And it's basically a city in caves. It's a city, it's a city in the rock. Quite amazing structure. And now it's world famous. Interestingly enough, after the death of Herbert Armstrong, it became world famous. And now it's the main tourist attraction of Jordan, the state of Jordan. In Psalm 91, you see, so David was hidden in a cave. In Psalm 91, verse 1, it is safety of abiding in the presence of God. The verse 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Well, secret place. Obviously, some people, Philadelphia remnant, of course, who else, will have to flee to a secret place where they'll be hidden and they'll be protected, you know, under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. I'll say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. 
my God, in him I will trust. Now this is a way of escape, brethren, obviously. God is refuge, so he'll provide a way of escape. Interestingly, refuge, you know, those who will be fleeing to the place of safety will be, in a sense, refugees from this world. And God is my fortress. Well, what is Petra, after all, than a fortress in the middle of the desert? Now, verse 3 says, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Now, brethren, we understand something here in Serbia because we know something about the Nazi Germany and hopefully next Sabbath, God willing, I may deliver to you a message about Germany in the prophecy. I am sure that you are aware what is the role of Germany in the prophecy, but it's never too much to be reminded. Brethren, this first part of verse 3, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Now this fowler, so this is the somebody who hunts the fowl, who hunts birds. So for you who may not be aware of the recent, relatively recent European history, there was a German Nazi officer who insisted that his soldiers would call him Fowler. The name was Heinrich Himmler, the head of the infamous SS division. Now he was named Fowler because one of the founders of the so-called Holy Roman Empire had such a nickname. And so Heinrich Himmler obviously believed that what he was doing, serving under Hitler, was obviously a restoration of that Roman Empire. Keep in mind that the Roman Empire basically, throughout its resurrections, was mostly ruled by well, it was founded by the German rulers, and it was ruled by, nonetheless, German rulers. So therefore, brethren, this verse has far greater, you know, far deeper meaning than perhaps we may see at first glance. This fowler, the net of the fowler, and this net also appears in uh, Psalm 124, I believe, and it is, it is verse 7. In fact, one of the Serbian members has composed a little text in Serbian about this fowler, and uh, sooner or later we might translate it into English for your benefit as well. It should be Psalm 124, I think, and it's verse 7, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yes, that's right. It says, Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. Now, here are they in plural, brethren. The snare is broken and we have escaped. So, to see, this fowler seems to be a, there are aspects of obviously character of the coming European dictator. It will be something like, an, you know, SS Nazis, of course. And brethren, interestingly enough, this snare of the fowler, I think it's mentioned in a few other places. There is a snare of that fowler which is being prepared for someone, brethren. In Psalm 83, you might remember that there is a description of Germany and the nations in cooperation with Germany preparing the snare for the modern house of Israel, brethren. Which tells us again something here. Tells us that the snare, the coming captivity of the Anglo-Saxon nation is being planned already. By who? By the father, who will be of German origin, the coming European dictator of course being held by the Arabian nations as it says in Psalm 83. Psalm 83 is a prophecy. It is amazing brethren how people usually take Psalms as being just inspirational books, uh, inspirational songs rather. However they keep forgetting that the Psalms also contain important prophecies for our time and our day. Here is Psalm 91 about the place of safety, a way of escape we read in, in, in verse 2. So this is about the future, our future. And the snare, you see, the snare of captivity, brethren, the snare of the fowler, the snare of Germans is being prepared right now. For a long time, they've had a plan to form the European army. That army will be the one, the instrumental one, that will be enslaving the Anglo-Saxon nations. So keep in mind that this first half of verse 3, brethren, is talking about Germany, about the coming, capti coming captivity on the house of Israel, by the Germans. 
but the holy, resurrected holy, so-called holy Roman Empire, which was at the same time, it was the union of state and the church, the Roman church and the Roman state. That is coming up now in the form of the European Union. And brethren, we're going to see the history repeating itself. The second half, of course, you realize it's very obvious. And from the perilous pestilences, well, it's talking about the disease epidemics, when one third will die. Well, prior as we get close to Christ's return. So this COVID-19 is part of that in a sense, but not as that intense and not that widespread as it will be, as it will be various disease epidemics as we come closer to Christ's return. Now let's go to verse 4, brethren. In verse 4 it says, He shall, speaking about God, cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. Well, I say wings, we remember also that on the wings of eagle, you know, wings, the remnant of spirit-led Israel is supposed to go to for its refuge. And under his wings you shall take refuge, his truth shall be your shield and bucklet. Shield and bucklet. Now let's go and see what, how can we understand this. I'm sure you know about Revelation chapter 12 verse 14. Yes, in Revelation 12 verse 14, brethren, we are told that there is definite place of safety. It's one place of safety. There are not places of safety. So there is one. It's one in the wilderness. Chapter 12, verse 14. But the woman, symbol of the church, was given two wings of a great eagle. So here are the wings, brethren. That she might fly into the wilderness to hear her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time, three and a half years, from the presence of the serpent. From the presence of the serpent and from the agents of the serpent, which will be the United States of Europe and the Roman Church. Ecumenical Roman Church. So basically here, you see... We have, we have the uh, we have the uh, prophecy about the escape, prophecy about the escape, and prophecy about about the flight of the Philadelphia remnant into the place of safety. Please go to Luke chapter seventeen, and we shall see verse thirty-seven. Luke seventeen. Verse 37 says, And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? Meaning about, you know, where will be that protection? And so he said to them, Wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. It's again allusion to the place of safety, brethren. We've also read that God is going to keep us as shield. He will, you know, he will be our shield. Now for shield, we need to see a couple of scriptures. One is Genesis chapter 15 verse 1 and the other will be Ephesians 6, 6 which we know that the shield of faith is there. Genesis chapter 15 and here is verse 1. It's God's covenant with Abraham. After these things the, the word of the Lord came to Abraham, Abraham in a vision saying, Do not be afraid Abraham, I am your shield your exceedingly great reward. So those who will be rewarded later to be kings and priests in the kingdom of God, brethren, will be under God's shield. They'll be in that, as we often said, last training for the kingdom of God. It may not be very pleasant, of course, because of the wilderness area and all kinds of things happening around the world, but still, it is the place of final training. In Ephesians 6, verse 16, as I mentioned already, it speaks about the whole armor of God. In verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery drafts, dar darts, that is, of the wicked one. Shield of faith. It will take some faith, brethren, to go to the place of safety. It will take a big faith to leave everything behind. Whatever that might be, our jobs, our houses, our... Our relatives, perhaps our children. So it will take some faith indeed. Now, as we are discussing about these things, let's read also 
three other sections from the Psalms. Let's go to Psalm chapter, uh, the, the, the Psalm number five, and let's see what it says in verse twelve. Psalm number five, verse twelve. It says, For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor you will surround him as with a shield. There is a hymn I think we have on that one. You will surround him as with a shield. So God is going to surround those in the refuge, those refugees as a shield. Uh, the same theme along the same line we find in Psalm 18, verse 35. Psalm 18, verse 35. It says, You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. This is, of course, speaking about God as the sovereign Savior. And it's a Psalm of David. So that's what is God as shield, you know, protecting people. Here's another. We have another uh, mention of shield in Psalm 84 and in verse 9. Psalm 84 verse 9 says, O God, God, God behold our shield and look upon thy, the face of your anointed. Of course, King David was anointed King of Israel. Now, brethren, we come to verse 5, Psalm 91. We come to something interesting in verse 5. It says, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Terror by night. Obviously, there will be battles going on, going around, brethren. Terror by night, you know. When we were bombed in Serbia in 1999, one of the worst episodes of the bombing were, were the night bombing, when we were in our beds, and then all of a sudden, around midnight or so, you just hear that buzzwords from the heaven. The aircrafts. And then you hear the other sound going, that was the bomb being dropped. And then you wait, you know, you wait so tense where it will drop. Perhaps it might drop right over your head. And then you hear that, and then all of a sudden there is a blast somewhere in the town. So there's a terror, you know, in, in the night, brethren. Terror in the night, obviously, it's the warfare. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow the f that flies by day. Now, what would be the arrow? Well, in our modern technology, brethren, arrows are bullets and missiles. There are some very sophisticated missiles that you can even see with your hands, how they fly in the air and uh, fly by day, and they just go and hit their target. Some of the people were witnesses of that, during again, during the bombing. Now, most of you, well, basically all of you have never experienced being, you know, being bombed by any nation. So, therefore, you cannot really perhaps fathom that how it looks like. But we can tell you and testify to you that, yes, there are certain very sophisticated arrows, brethren, missiles. They just go, they just go fly through the air. They just bounce off any, 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 any obstacle. They just go around any, any non-targets. And then just they just come, come, fly, fly, and strike straight into the target. Amazing. So this will might be going on. We might be able to witness this from the place of safety, brethren. But nothing will touch us. Of course, there'll be no missiles to harm us, no bullets. We might see all of those warfare going on in route because it'll be in a war zone. That's why I said it'll take faith to go to the place of safety because the place of safety might be in a war zone. And your relatives and friends might be saying, how crazy you are. How can you go to the war zone? You're going to the Middle East. Don't you know there is a war there? Yes, but what they, your relatives and friends will not know is that there is an even worse war and worse slavery coming to your nations, Anglo-Saxon nations, when the time comes. And then it continues in verse 6. Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness... Pestilence, of course, disease, epidemics, and famine, brethren. Nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. And then verse 7. A thousand may fall. Now, now perhaps you may have never connected this, brethren, to the place of safety. But now it's time to connect because I'm, not, I'm sure that many of you know this verse very well. 
A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Well, brethren, again, the place of safety may be close to a war zone, of course. Because Petra is not far away from Jerusalem. And the state of Israel, of course. And indeed, going to the place of safety in a war zone might be test of one's faith, you know. So connect this, brethren. A thousand men, we may see the war operations. A thousand may fall at one side and ten thousand on the other side. Because, of course, when the big armies, eastern armies, come from the east, we're going to see battles. So we might be witnesses of that. I'm not sure that we have ever connected this verse 7 to the place of safety, but here it is. Verse 8. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. In, another, in, another, in, other, in other words, brethren, we'll see the tribulation war in the distance, but we will not experience it, you see. We can look at our eyes, but we'll not experience it because we'll be safe. Verse 9. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. There will be plagues, brethren, even your dwelling. Well, this verse 9 and 10, we can connect that with Ecclesiastes chapter 8. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 8. It was just about there, and now it just escaped me from, from the pages. All right, Ecclesiastes. Oh, all right, let's see the pages, because... All right, Ecclesiastes. Here are the Proverbs. Now we don't need Proverbs, we need Ecclesiastes, and we don't need the Song of Solomon. Oh, there it is, chapter 8. And in verse, let's see, verse, let's see, verse 1. Who is like a wise man, and who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom makes his face shine, and the sternness of his face is changed. Now we can drop to uh, verse 5. He who keeps his command will experience nothing harmful. And a wise man's heart discerns both time and judgment. Well, brethren, I think that I hope that we are discerning that we're living in the last days. I think since last week, after reading that article written by Dr. Thiel, I think we understand now and discern the times and how close we are to the return of Christ. But you see, it says that no harm, no harm will come upon those who keep his command. They'll experience nothing harmful. That is what it says in, you know, verse 9 and verse 10. No evil shall befall you, nor any plague come near your dwelling. Then comes verse 11, which speaks about angelic protection, brethren. Because it says, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Again, yes, we know this verse, I'm sure, but I'm not sure if we have ever really connected it to the place of safety. Because it was a place, it will be a place of supernatural protection. Especially if it will be in the war zone. It need it'll need to have some angels to make supernatural protection and covering over that over that place, brethren. So that those warring parties will not be able to spot where it is or destroy those who are in the place. Now, I'm sure you know about the angelic protection. We know from the Bible, perhaps some of you may have experienced it directly. Uh, I can't remember myself. I don't have any example in personal life, but I'm sure there were always angels around me as we pray for God's mercy and protection, especially when we go out of homes and travel. In Matthew chapter 18 and verse 10, there is the parable of the lost sheep. And it says, Take heed, Jesus Christ is speaking this, Take heed, he says, that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. 
angelic protection. Then in also in Acts chapter 12, in Acts chapter 12 and in verse 15, it says, But they say to her, said to her, You are beside yourself. Yet she kept insisting that it was so, so they said, It is it is his angel when Peter was supernaturally released from prison. They thought it was his angel. So there is the angelic protection, brethren. And we see now in verse 12, Psalm 91, that it is both physical and spiritual protection. It says in verse 12, In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Stone. Now why is a stone mentioned there? Well, there is a city in stones, brethren. There is a city in the rock. And in uh, just three Psalms forward, Psalm 94, verse 18, we read, If I say my foot slips, your mercy, O Lord, will hold me up. So we're having angelic protection over the place of safety. There's both physical and spiritual protection. And God has guaranteed that to us. Then in the next verse, verse 13, brethren, we see three symbols of Satan and the demons. God is going to protect us from all of that. Verse 13. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. So we have serpent, we have uh, cobra. I'm not sure about this young li uh, lion. Uh, I, I think it might be saying young dragon in some, in, in, in some translations. But in any case, we have symbolism of Satan and demons. Satan and demons, of course, will be wreaking havoc around the world. And in that place, obviously around the place of safety. But, you know, they will not be able to touch God's elect. In verse 14, it says, Because he has set his love upon me, and as you know, brethren, what is love? In Romans chapter 13 and verse 10, love is basically defined as keeping God's commandments. If there is, you know, there are five commandments listed, and then Paul says if there is any other commandment, it's all fulfilled in one, in love. And what is, of course, a Philadelphia remnant? It's remnant of brotherly, of those people who make up the church of brotherly love. So it says, because he has, had, he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name. I'm sure you understand and remember, brethren, that in Revelation chapter 3, verse 8, it is promised to the Philadelphia church, because you have kept my name, I'll keep you from the hour of trial that is coming upon this world. We have kept his name. What does that mean? We have kept the authority of Christ in our lives. Yes, it does include the proper church government, the proper government of God in his organization, but we kept the authority of Jesus Christ. We did not deny any of his commands. And therefore, because we keep his authority and live under his authority, we will be accounted worthy to escape if we do. Now, high. We've read this here, that I'll set him on high. There's an interesting section of three verses in the book of Job, in chapter 39. For those of you who love Job, and some of you do, here is something that will comfort you even more as you realize now and make correlation between Job and verse 14 in Psalm 91. Job chapter 39, verse 27. It says, Does the eagle mount up at your command and make its nest on high? On the rock, it dwells and resides on the crag of the rock and the stronghold. From there it spies out the prey, its eyes observe from afar. Its young ones suck up blood and there, where the slain are, there it is. Reference to eagle who makes his nest on high on the rock, brethren. And this is not the only reference about the rock. In fact, there are numerous references about the rock in the Bible. And the claim that there is only a vague reference to Petra in the book of Isaiah cannot be farther from the truth, brethren, because the Old Testament, as well as the New, later 
are full of references about that rock. And we will certainly, to be strengthened in our faith, we'll certainly go over all of those verses. I just wanted to bring your attention to Psalm 91 as being a scripture, being a scripture part of the scripture speaking about the place of safety. Now let's read the two, re the two remaining verses which speak basically about the eternal life. Verse 15. He shall call upon me and I'll answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. Which trouble? Well, trouble, obviously, the greatest trouble in the world. I'll be with him in trouble. I'll deliver him and honor him. With long life, I'll satisfy him. Which is long life? Well, obviously, long life will be the eternal life. And show him my salvation. Well, the salvation is coming with Jesus Christ. And it will be shown to us as we come back into life if we are dead or if we be transformed if we are alive into spirit beings so brethren here is one again psalm 91 speaks about the place of safety i wanted you to know that before i close i want to draw your attention again i said that perhaps hopefully next sabbath i hope to deliver to you a, a nice message about the german in prophecy in which i'm going to quote a french historian who has well described the character of germans because, you know, to all of you outside of Europe, the character of Germans is not really well known. To those of us who have experienced the German occupations, in our case twice, to those of us whose ancestors experienced the two genocides committed by the Germans, we do understand their character much better. But, you know, their neighbors, the French, of course, understand their character even better because they've been in war with them twice and... <laughs> suffered also occupation from them in the Second World War. To a great shame, actually, uh, the capital of France was basically taken without one bullet shot. It was defenseless. It's amazing because in the First World War, you remember, the French army was a great one and did participate in the liberation of the European continent from the Austro-Hungarians. And they admired also our very poorly equipped Serbian little army with those peasants who were just running and, and breaking through the front lines trying to get home as soon as possible. It's a long story but anyway history does teach us brethren a lot of things. But because I hope to deliver a, a good sermon hopefully an educational sermon about Germans and German in prophecy I want to bring your attention in closing to Ezekiel chapter 5 because many times I mentioned to you Ezekiel chapter 5 and 6 speaking about the coming holocaust of the anglo-saxon nations the holocaust of the house of e, uh, house of israel ezekiel chapter 5 and you might just uh, also hold your finger in isaiah chapter 7 because here we are going to make some interesting connections and perhaps this would be a revelation to some of you ezekiel chapter 5 Ezekiel, I'll remind you, is, was appointed the uh, watchman over the house of Israel. Ezekiel was a prisoner of war, captured by the Babylonians. He was unable to actually deliver the message to the ancient Israel, which by that time was already lost from his sight because they already went into captivity and then began to scatter around the world. And that means that this message, brethren, of Ezekiel was not meant for the ancient, for the ancient Israel, but for the modern Israel. And you, verse 1, son of man, take a sharp sword, or in some verses as take a barber's razor. Take it as a barber's razor, there it is, a sharp sword, take it as a barber's razor, and pass it over your head and your beard. Then take scales to weigh and divide the hair. Verse 2, you shall burn with fire one-third in the midst of the city, when the days of the siege are finished, those will be the economic sanctions, brethren. Remember the days of the siege I mentioned to you many times. When the days of the siege are finished, then you shall take one third and strike around it with the sword. That's the occupation of the Anglo-Saxon world. And one third you shall scatter in the wind. I'll draw out a sword after them. Israel, brethren, will go into captivity. Especially the Anglo-Saxon people because they are the holders of the birthright promise. Ezekiel chapter 5 is prophecy to you, America, to you, Canada, 
and to you New Zealand and to you Great Britain. But brethren, verse 3, Philadelphia will escape. You shall also take a small number of them and bind them in the edge of your garment. But who will not escape, brethren? Verse 4, Laodiceans will not escape. Then take some of them again and throw them into the midst of the fire and burn them in the fire. From there a fire will go out into all the house of Israel. Brethren, this is for all time because the fire had never gone out to the whole house of Israel. Destruction of Jerusalem was destruction of the house of Judah. But the fire, this kind of destruction, never did go out into all the house of Israel. This is, brethren, for our time. This is prophecy for our time. Now, concerning Laodiceans, we can see a few other references as well. But before we do, let me bring your attention to this barber's razor, brethren. Who is barber's razor in verse 1? Take a sharp sword, God says to Ezekiel, take it as a barber's razor and pass it over your head and your beard. Who is that one, brethren? Isaiah chapter 7. In Isaiah chapter 7, we go to verse... In the same day, the Lord will shave with a hired razor, with those from beyond the river, with the king of Assyria. Here we are, brethren. Barbara's razor of Ezekiel chapter 5 verse 1 is Assyria. The head and the hair of the legs and will also remove the beard. If you back up a little bit, it says in verse 18, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will whistle for the fly that is in the farthest part of the rivers of Egypt, and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. They will come, and all of them will rest in the desolate valleys and the clefts of the rock, and on all thorns and in all the pastures. In the same day the Lord will shave with a hired razor with those beyond the river with the king of Assyria. Brethren, the king of Assyria, the coming European dictator, here is the barber's razor of Ezekiel chapter 5 verse 1. And we see from verse 2 that Israel will go into captivity, of course. Who will take Israel into captivity? The army, the European army, headed and commanded by this barber's razor. We also, verse 3, we see that Philadelphia will escape, the Philadelphia remnant. But verse 4, we see that the Laodiceans will be thrown into the fire. No, they will not escape. Concerning the Laodiceans, I said, let's see the reference to them. Verse Chapter 6, verse 8 and 9. Yet I will leave a remnant, so that you may have some who escape the sword among the nations when you are scattered through the countries. Then those of you who escape, so those who will not escape, but those of you who escape, will remember me among the nations where they are carried captive because I was crushed by their adulterous heart which has departed from me and by their eyes which play the harlot after their idols they will loathe themselves for the evils which they com committed in all their abominations. Chapter 11 verse 16 Therefore say Thus says the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the Gentiles, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet I shall be a little sanctuary for them in the countries where they have gone. And in verse 15 and 16 of chapter 12, verse 15, Then they shall know that I am the Lord, when I scatter them among the nations and disperse them through the countries, but I'll spare a few of their men from the sword, from famine, and from pestilence, that they may declare all the abominations among the Gentiles wherever they go. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. So the Laodiceans, brethren, will not escape, because in Ezekiel chapter 9, in verse 4, we also read that the Lord said to them, Go through the midst of the city. Jerusalem is also, brethren, a symbol of the, of the true church. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 21 and 22. Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over all the abominations that are done within it. 
To the others he said in my hearing, go after him through the city and kill. Do not let your eyes spare nor have pity. Utterly slay old men and young men, maidens and little children and women, but do not come near anyone on whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. That's what it is. So they began with the elders who were before the temple. Then he said to me, then he said to them, defile the temple and fill the courts with the slain. Go out. And they went out and killed in the city. I'll stop right there. I just wanted to give you some pretest of the coming sermon next Sabbath, brethren. And the purpose of this one was to reveal to you that Psalm 91 Perhaps you are not aware of that is the psalm about the place of safety.